Hello dear students, I am your educator Burhanuddin and it's time to cram. This is the series of acid, base and salt, chapter 2, class 10. And this is the 14th video lecture of the series. So as you can see on the screen, in this video lecture, we are going to discuss question and answer of section 2.2 what do all acids and all base have in common so these are the list of topic which i had covered in my previous video lecture if you want to watch it then click the i button and these are the activities which i had covered in chemical properties of acid and bases if you want to watch this video then click the i button in section 2.2 i had covered three activities i strongly recommend you to watch all these activities before watching today's video lecture because all the question and answer which we are going to discuss are taken from these activities only. So if you want to watch it then click the i button. After reading the question first understand that from which activity this question is taken then only you will be able to answer the question. So let's discuss our first question that is why do HCl, HNO3 etc shows acidic character in aqueous solution while solution of compounds like alcohol and glucose do not show acidic character. The question want to ask that why HCl, HNO3 etc compounds show acidic character in aqueous solution and compound like alcohol and glucose is not showing acidic character. So this question is taken from activity 2.9. You should remember activity 2.9. If you want to watch it then click the i button. So let's see the answer. The dissociation of HCl or HNO3 to form hydrogen ion always occur in the presence of water so as i taught you in activity 2.9 that dissociation of hcl or hno3 will only occur in the presence of water it will not occur in the absence of water it means that hcl will not separate h plus ion in absence of water it will only separate h plus ion that is hydrogen ion in the presence of water now the hydrogen ion which is separated will combine with h2o to form hydronium ion after uh, separating H plus in aqueous solution it that H plus will combine with water and will form a hydronium ion so let's see how hydronium ion is formed so when HCl is mixed with water then this is how HCl dissociate its ions it means that HCl will produce H plus ion and Cl minus ion so when HCl is dissolved in water it will produce H plus ion and Cl minus ion so now this H plus ion will combine with H2O and it will form H3O plus that is hydronium ion although aqueous solution of glucose and alcohol contain hydrogen I am not saying that glucose and alcohol don't have hydrogen they also have hydrogen but when we dissociate them into water they will not form H plus ion and as I told you the compound which separate H plus ion will be acid and here alcohol and glucose will not separate H plus ion so how we can say them acid due to these they don't show acidic character. I hope everyone is clear. Now let's move to the next question. Question number 2. Why does an aqueous solution of an acid conduct electricity? Now I had taught you this in activity 2.8 that how acid conduct electricity. So if you had not watched video of activity 2.8 then click the i button. Now let's see the answer. In activity 2.8 we had seen that the solution of HCl and H2SO4 will conduct electricity and bulb will glow but in the case of glucose and alcohol bulb will not glow and in previous question I told you that HCl, HNO3, H2SO4 like compound will produce H plus ion in water and glucose and alcohol will not produce H plus ion in water so this is the answer of given question that acid dissociate in aqueous solution to form ions and these ions are responsible for the conduction of electricity hope everyone is clear now let's move on question number three why does dry HCl gas not change the color of dry litmus paper about this we had discussed in activity 2.9 in activity 2.9 we had seen that 
when we take dry litmus paper near dry HCl gas, the color of dry blue litmus paper will not change. But when we take wet blue litmus paper near dry HCl gas, the color of wet blue litmus paper will turn to red. So if you have not watched activity 2.9, then click the i button. Then you will be able to answer this question. Now, now let's see the answer. So as I told you before that HCl like acid will dissociate H plus ion that is hydrogen ion in the presence of water and in this case the HCl gas is dry and the litmus paper is also dry so water is not present in both of them so how H plus will be produced and if H plus will be not produced then dry HCl gas will not show acidic characteristic and if it will not show acidic characteristic then litmus paper will not turn its color this is the simple logic of this question so the color of litmus paper is changed by hydrogen ion which will show acidic characteristic and dry HCl gas does not contain H plus ion so as I told you earlier that it is only in aqueous solution that an acid dissociate to give ions since in this case neither HCl is in aqueous form nor litmus paper is wet therefore the color of litmus paper will doesn't change hope everyone is clear now let's move on question number four while diluting an acid why it is recommended that acid should be added to water and not water to the acid so the answer of this question is hidden in activity 2.10 if you don't know what activity 2.10 what to teach us then click the i button and watch it now let's move on the answer as in activity 2.10 i had discussed that when we add acid to the water heat is released as we had seen by touching the base of the beaker in which we had added acid in the water we had seen there that the temperature of the beaker has increased it means that when we add acid to the water or water to the acid heat is released and if heat is released so it is known as exothermic process so the process of dissolving an acid or a base in water is highly exothermic one care must be taken while mixing concentrated nitric acid or sulfuric acid with water the acid must be always added slowly to the water with constant stirring if water is added to the concentrated acid the heat generated may cause mixture to splash out and cause burns the glass container may also break due to excessive local heating so in activity 2.10 we had added acid to the water and we had seen that the temperature was increased now imagine that what happened if we had added water to the acid because in activity 2.10 we had taken 10 ml of water and few drops of acid and temperature was increased and in the place of water if we take acid and in the place of acid we take water imagine what will happen there is a huge uh, change in temperature it is said that care must be taken while mixing concentrated acid with water hope everyone is clear now let's move to the question number five how is concentration of hydronium ion affected when a solution of an acid is diluted now the answer of this question is hidden in activity 2.9 as in activity 2.9 i had discussed there when we dilute acid the concentration of hydronium ion will be decreased per unit volume which will result in decrease in the strength of hydronium ion so let's see the answer yes when an acid is diluted the concentration of hydronium ion that is h3o plus per unit volume will be decreased this means that the strength of an acid is decrease it is very simple hope everyone is clear with it now let's move to our last question that is question number six how is the concentration of hydroxide ion that is os minus affected when excess base is dissolved in a solution of sodium hydroxide the answer of this question is also in activity 2.9 only in activity 2.9 we had seen that when we dissolve sodium hydroxide in water we had seen that hydroxide ions are produced it means that base will produce hydroxide ions if we keep on adding excess base it means that hydroxide ion will also increase so let's see the answer yes 
the concentration of hydroxide ion that is OH minus would increase when excess base is dissolved in solution of sodium hydroxide as I told you earlier. Hope everyone is clear. So these are the six questions which were which are given in your NCERT textbook after the completion of section 2.2 .2, what do all acids and all base have in common the notes of this question and answer are shared in description box kindly check description box view my bloggers page and download the notes the topic which will be covered in next video lecture is 2.3 how strong are acid or base in solutions so if you find this video informative and helpful then like it and share it with your classmates so that it can help to them also and still you had not subscribed to our channel time to cram then subscribe it and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will be notified when new video of class 9 or 10 is uploaded that's all for today's video lecture thank you